Hello everybody and welcome to an evening in Paris. Heaven's on fire. We appreciate you taking time out of your busy week to join us every Tuesday evening as we share the good things of God. Amen. I want you to invite your friends and hopefully you can uh, amen learn and uh, some things and we can be strengthened and encouraged in the Lord together. Amen. As I do every Tuesday night before we get started I want to give you our mailing address and, and invite you to uh, write to us. I want to say we appreciate so very much all of you that correspond with us whether it's by email or comments live on Facebook or text or calls or uh, if you sit down and write a letter however you choose we always look forward to hearing from the body of Christ everywhere. Amen. It's an honor and a privilege for you to sit down and take a minute and write and share with us what God is doing in your life. We appreciate it so much. Uh, you can uh, write to us, Gary and Paula Gatlin, that's at 901 East Wood Street, Paris, Tennessee, 38242. And we'll be giving you that address a little bit later on in the evening. Amen. <clears throat> and uh, if you want to now tonight, you might want to turn with me to the book of, uh, uh, I believe it's Second Kings uh, 18. I'll uh, pull it up here in a second for you. But... Uh, I want to uh, give you some announcements real quick before we get too far into this tonight. Amen. Uh, October 12, 13, 14, 15. That starts on a Thursday night at the Natchez Trace State Park. Bob and Bobby Jean Taranjo will be hosting the 46th Annual House of the Lord Conference there. Amen. You can go on their uh, Facebook page or Zach Reagan's Facebook page and they have all the information there. You can email them or text them and get all the information you need. Amen. It's going to be a glorious time in the Lord, so we invite you to come. Amen. And make it a, a wonderful, wonderful weekend. That's October 12, 13, 14, and 15. It starts on a Thursday night, two services Saturday, two, uh, two Friday, two Saturday, and then Sunday morning. So it's going to be a good time. Mark that on your calendar. You will enjoy it, I promise you. Amen. Also, while I'm at it, uh, every Sunday morning at 1030 Central Time, the House of the Lord has their uh, Sunday morning service. Uh, live and we invite you to tune in and we when Paul and I uh, are able we try to go and be a part of what God's doing there but we encourage you to tune in you will enjoy it it's life giving as God speaks a great word of life <coughs> to his people also don't forget tune in to the church now all this is on Facebook Facebook live the church where Darren and Dana Best are the pastors there in Mooresboro North Carolina uh, that their services is Sunday evening at 5 o'clock Eastern Time. Uh, and then, of course, the last Saturday of the month, they have a Saturday evening at 5 o'clock Eastern Time. But tune into that live. I tell you what, it is a powerful, powerful Word of God. They have wonderful music. They have wonderful worship. And Darren always has a powerful, life-giving Word, amen, that will just bless you, strengthen you, and lift you up. So make plans to join them every Sunday evening. Uh, that's at uh, 5 o'clock Eastern Time at The Church or Darren Best, either one of those Facebook pages. He shares that live. Join them and you will be blessed. Amen. As I do every Tuesday night, I like to share the words to this song written by a precious friend of ours, Faith Simons, that crossed over some years ago. Uh, she was from Cross Plains, Texas. And God gave her the words to this song. And it is such a beautiful song, and as far as I'm concerned at this point in, in my life, uh, this is what God is speaking, at least to me and so very many people that I know. Our heavens are on fire as He changes our relationship with Him, as He expands and broadens and changes everything. And it's so necessary that we hear a current life-giving word from the Lord. And, uh, and I know so many of you, they've heard us sing it before at the meetings and so forth, and you no doubt know it. Uh, better than I do, but I like to read it and start off the broadcast on Tuesday nights with it. So it says, Heaven's on fire, destruction it seems, earthquakes and shakings and broken dreams. But this is the best place I have ever been. There's a new heaven and a new earth and righteousness within. So let the fire burn away all the failure in me and let the shaking establish perfect harmony till only the pureness of Christ shall fill this land until the Word made flesh be manifested again. What a powerful, powerful song that is. Amen. Tonight, I want you to go with me, if you will, and this is just uh, uh, some place that I feel like we probably will start. 
uh, 1 Kings 18. I'm sorry, it's 1 Kings 18, yeah. Uh, and I'm not going to read uh, uh, much of it, except you can just follow it along uh, and uh, see what God's saying. There's about Elijah uh, when the heavens opened up. And that most of you that, that follow our ministry, you, you know these scriptures already, so I won't try to... Uh, get into any super detail here, but I do want to share some thoughts with you tonight that the Lord began to quicken in my spirit, and I, I know I say this a lot, Paula tells me this all the time, but I'm afraid it makes sense. Uh, the reason I say that is as I get into this, sometimes I, I hear the Lord saying, so he'll drop things in my spirit, and as I try to articulate it and get it out, uh, I'm thinking to myself, I don't even know if that makes any sense to myself, much less anybody else, so bear with me on that, but I want us, I want you to follow me just for a little bit tonight. We're going to talk uh, on the subject or theme or whatever you want to call it about a word in season. Uh, and we're going to take that, a word in season, and then we'll, I'm going to try to get into it, explain it a little bit, share it with you just, just for a few minutes because I want to take you to a word out of season. And this is where I feel the Lord is doing something right now. Okay. Now, a word in season, the Bible says in, in the book of Proverbs, I believe it is, it said that, that uh, a word in season is like apples of gold and pitchers of silver. These, these, a word in season, when you are where God wants you to be at that point in time of your life, whether it be could be a trial it, it could be a high place a mountain it could be a low valley it could be anything the point i'm making is wherever you are you we always like to hear words of encouragement we want to hear a word in season something that will strengthen you bless you lift you up and everything but god began to quicken something to me and this is the theme of what i want to talk to you tonight for just a little bit if i can and i'm praying that that i can get it out so it, it makes some sense is that uh, the Lord began to speak this to me, and I wanted, I wanted you to hear this. A teacher, a preacher, a whatever you want to call them, I mean, anybody that God puts in, or you can be a parent. The, the, the point I'm making is this. A teacher, and I'll use that word just for now, is someone who wants to instill in you or share with you or instruct you uh, in something. Uh, you know, uh, if you've got an English class or math class or whatever, in something but the purpose, I want it doesn't matter what subject, you pick one. What matters is not that you, you are, are there to stay. That teacher is trying to put into you some kind of knowledge or some kind of instruction so that uh, uh, at a point in time, he or she can prepare you for the next move, for the next step, for the next phase. All right? So... A word in season is something that will strengthen you, encourage you, lift you up, and love you, and so forth and so on. But there comes a point in that time when that, that word has to settle in you to the point that you are prepared to make a transition. Okay, now I want to show you something. The Lord began to show me this right here. So you, you just, I, I'm praying that, that uh, I can get this out. The Lord spoke this in the book of Exodus, and, and real quick, i got to get through this to save some time. The Lord spoke that, that uh, the children of Israel come out of Egypt. They, Moses had been sent ahead of them to prepare them. First Joseph was sent ahead, then Moses was sent ahead, meaning in, into the wilderness for 40 years. He goes back, he gets the children of Israel, brings them out. They wander for 40 years. <clears throat> now, God, God took care of them. He, he gave them manna, he gave them quail, their clothes didn't wear out. On and on and on and on and on. We could go all on. That was the word, or, or if you please, a time of the word of the Lord in season for them. It kept them in their time. It kept them. But it did not prepare them for what was to come. Moses could not do that. How do you know that? Okay, watch this. The Bible said after they immediately came out of Egypt, they were just there a few days, they got thirsty. And they said, "We, what'd you do, Moses? Bring us about out here to kill us, you know." And, and the Bible said, "Moses, you know, he was all upset and everything." Told the Lord, and the Lord says, "Well, you smite the rock; the water comes out, their thirst is quenched, and God says, okay, because of their murmuring and complaining and their lack of trust in me, and et cetera, et cetera, I'm they're going to die in the wilderness. But Moses, I'm going to raise you up a generation that never knew Egypt, and you're going to take them into a place. All right, now watch this. A day or so later, the same people." got the same problem 
with Moses in the, the same guy in the leadership. Okay, everything is the same, but it was a different day, and the different day brought a different sound, a different word. This is, ladies and gentlemen, where we are, and I want us to hear this. We are in a time of change right now. We are in a time where there is a fresh new sound coming from heavens, the very throne room of God. And it's necessary that we do not be comfortable in the old, that we don't settle down in our old thing, and that we become excited about what God is doing, even though we may not fully understand up here what's going on, that God begins to get a people that's ready. God said, I do nothing unless I reveal it to my prophets. And here's what God is speaking. He said, get ready, folks. There is a change that's coming. Now, watch this. There, and when I say this, there are those that, that God is speaking to right now. And even as I'm talking, there's a witness right deep inside of you right now that's saying, yay and amen. Something is on the horizon. We're about to make a transition. We know the story. Moses did not hear. He did not heed the sound of the He heard the sound, but he didn't walk in it. He didn't follow in it. And he reverted to that which he was comfortable. And that's smiting the rock. And, he, and because of that, he lost his inheritance. Now, I want, to, I want to go a little further here because I want to show you something. Uh, uh, all through the scriptures, there was a word in season giving, given to God's people, God's men and women throughout the, the scriptures, throughout the chapters in the books of the Bible. But hidden in those moves, in those chapters, there was a word out of season, or if you please, something that was designed to prepare for the next place. Uh, I want us to understand that. Amen. When, when a farmer goes out and he's, he plows the field, he's preparing for that harvest or for that, that, that planting. And he plants and he sows and he fertilizes and he waters and he doesn't. Those are words in season that's needed for that. But in the heart of that farmer, in the heart of that person, uh, 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 even though his corn or, or wheat or whatever it is is growing up and is beautiful, in his heart, he's already uh, looking towards the harvest and beyond that to prepare for that which is to come. Uh, he just cannot keep doing the same thing over and over and over again, expecting anything to change. And this is where uh, we, we get all screwed up. Now, what's this? I'm going to take you real quick. Amen. <coughs> to to First Kings, the 18th chapter, the story of Elijah. Elijah comes out of nowhere, and he shows up on the scene, and immediately he goes to the king, and he said, uh, the heavens are sealed, they're closed, it's not going to rain until I say so. Then he leaves, and we know the story. He goes, and he gets by the brook Kirith, and then he goes to the widow woman's house, and he, he goes all these places, and uh, there's no rain, there's no nothing, and, and, and God, uh, if you please, and watch this, all through there, as Elijah, I'll, I'll, back, I'll break this down real slow. As, as Elijah is down by the brook Kerith, and, I, and a lot of people call it Cherith, but it's Kerith. And because of that, 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 the raven is feeding him. He's drinking from the brook. That's his word in season. It's something that is sustaining him, but it is not yet coming as far as he knows. All he knows is this is what's here. God says in order to move him, God has to dry up the brook. This is where some of us have been. God has to dry up your brook and stop the ravens from coming in order for you to even get out of your comfort zone. Now, I know I'm jumping ahead here, but I'm praying this is making some sense. So here he goes. He goes down to the widow woman's house. We know the story there. Uh, <clears throat> and then th th there's such a famine. There is such a hardship because the heavens are sealed. And this is where we have been, ladies and gentlemen. The heavens have been sealed for a time and a season, and it's been on a hard, dry place. And people are getting worried, and they're getting frustrated. As they look around about us at the world right now, the crazy politicians all over the world of every stripe and all the mess that's going on everywhere. Churches are giving nothing but false hope and promises. Uh, 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 preachers are trying to reap money unto themselves. They're trying to reap glory unto themselves and do their own thing and, and, and raise their ministries and on and on and on. And God's people are hungry, hungry, hungry. And they're finding that this food is few and far between. But God has some Elijahs in the land and and God says it's necessary we hear the sound of this change. Please understand, the, 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 the new day always brings a new sound. 
a new ministry, a new anointing. I'm not talking about personalities, even though that may be involved somewhere along the way. But I'm talking about the ministries that God are raising up in this hour are going to have a new sound, a new anointing, a new word that's coming. And it's not going to be the old. It's not going to be something that's going to tickle your ears. It's not going to be something that you're going to begin to fall back on into a comfort zone and wait on some glad morning. But it's going to be something from the Most High God that He gets ready to move us into a dimension we've never been into before. I, I, I hope this is making some sense. Now watch this. Because my desire today is to not give you a word in season. You've had a lot of those already. I'm trying to open your understanding and anoint your eyes and ears to see and know some things beyond your understanding, beyond where you are, to realize there's something, amen, that God is dropping in the midst of His chosen generation, this royal priesthood, and He's saying, get ready. There's about to be a change, and you're not going to be changed if you stay back to the old, if you keep smiting the rock, if you just keep doing the same old, same old. There's some things that must change. Now, watch this. The Bible said, and we know this, you know, they, they, they had the 850 false prophets there and Elijah's standing alone by them. And the God that answers by fire, let him be God. And we know that. Then he, he tells everybody when God answers by fire to catch all the prophets and kill them. And Jezebel goes, that's not going to work, uh, Elijah. We're going to put a, 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 a bounty on your head. And so he goes and he hides. And we know the story here. But I want to get to 1 Kings 18 because I want to show you something. God says, I'm getting ready. I'm getting ready to give a word in season. Now, when the, when the word uh, that we've had in season, it'll bless you, lift you up, and strengthen you. And you'll drink it like a cold drink of water, and it'll be wonderful. But when God begins to send an anointed ministry into your spirit and into your life to bring you a word that's not in this season, but is in that which is to come, it's not going to make any sense. Jesus had that same problem with his very own chosen hand-picked disciples for he began to tell them he began to tell them said look he said I'm gonna I, I, I'm gonna go away and they said well Lord you, you can't go away and if you'll remember Jesus told him said I'm gonna you know he, he told uh, uh, Peter and uh, the disciples whom do men say that I am and some said well you're Elijah and some said you're this and you're a prophet and you're this and Jesus said who do you say that I am and Peter said thou art the Christ the son of the living God and Jesus said flesh and blood and not reveal this unto you but uh, my father which is in heaven and they talk a little bit and Peter's all he's all happy happy because he's got a revelation the others don't seem to have and he's all happy and as he's happy about this Jesus said now I've got to go and and three days, they're going to kill me. Three days, I'm going to, I, I'll raise up. And Peter said, not so, Lord. Not so, Lord. Why? Because he was giving them a word not in, see, see, a word in season was something that would strengthen them, lift them up and bless them and encourage them, their hopes. Because the whole house of Israel was waiting on Messiah. And they began to look at Jesus and said, you are the Messiah. We finally are realizing this thing. This is a word in season. This is great. We love it. But Jesus said, ha, I'm going to be taken from you. And I'm going to be beaten. I'm going to be crucified. But in three days, no, that's not going to happen. Uh, no. Why? Because that's a word that was not in season, but out of season, but it was yet to come. And those that had an eye and an ear to see and hear and know, honey, they were few and far from matter of fact. Nobody saw that word coming. But the Bible said, and if you remember, come on now, go with me to resurrection morning. Mary goes down to the cemetery, not because she thinks he's alive, not because she's going down there to celebrate his resurrection. She thinks he's still dead. She just got her little basket of goodies, and she wants to go down there and anoint him after the custom of the old order. But he was not there. The angel said, he's not here. He's risen. And we can get all into that. I, I don't want to get sidetracked here. But I want us to understand something. There is a fresh anointed word. Elijah, he begins to hear a word from the Lord. God begins to speak to him and said, The heavens, and I'm paraphrasing, The heavens are open, Elijah. And Elijah tells uh, Ahaz the king, he said, Go eat and drink. He said, For there's a sound of an abundance of rain. That old king was a wicked king. He didn't have any idea what that sound meant. He didn't know anything about anything. All he knew was his heavens had been sealed. He was ruling over a kingdom that was burnt and dry and barren. And people were dying left and right through the famine. And here's this crazy old prophet standing here saying there's a sound of abundance of rain. That was a word not in season but out of season. That was that which 
was to come. And God is speaking a word to you and I, ladies and gentlemen. He said, I'm giving you a word now that's not in this season, but is in that which is to come. Gird up your loins. I heard the Lord say that tonight. Gird up your loins. Because there is a sound of an abundance of rain. And you need to understand. Amen. If you stay in only the season you're in, nothing ever changes. But we are in a season of change. And God said, I'm raising up men and women prophets that are saying, get ready, get ready. I'm about to move you and boost you into a new dimension. Oh, hallelujah. I, I'm hoping this is making some sense. All right, here we go. Now, the Bible said, that, that he and, and I know we know this. He goes up to top to top of Mount Carmel, and, and, and he, he he he. The Bible says. Now watch this. The Bible says he puts his head between his knees, type in a shadow there. He was he 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 was in a what you might want to call a birthing position. I'm here to tell you, God's got some men and women's prophets that are raising up, and they are going through birthing pains, about to bring a word out of season that's going to birth a change. In God's people everywhere. People are waiting and they're hungry. But there's no rain. There's no anointing. There's no glory in the house. But I'm here to tell you there's about to be a glory. That's going to come and begin to strengthen. And minister and raise up. Uh, the Bible says. That he tells. We know this story. He tells his servant. He said go and look and tell me what you see. The Bible said the servant runs over there and he could see nothing. Can I tell you something? What I'm ministering right now, the majority of people don't see. They don't understand. They don't hear the sound. They don't see. They don't know. It don't make any sense. And I, I'm, I'm almost to that point where I'm wondering about it myself. But the prophet said, I told him, said, go look again. And he goes and he looks and there's nothing. And then he said, do it again. And after six times, he said, look, uh, Master, I'm going and I'm doing everything you say. There's no change. This is where this is where the word out of season begins to take effect, ladies and gentlemen. There are people that are preaching, praying, singing, shouting, dancing, and there's no change. It's just something to get them from one Sunday to the next, or from one battle to the next, or one uh, victory to the next. And it doesn't seem to be much of a change. It's one battle after another. Their health, their finances, their children, their jobs, their cars, whatever. I'm here to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, that God says, get ready. I'm fixing to loose this thing into a dimension from the very throne room of the Father. For you're going to see God do something mighty in this day, ladies and gentlemen. Mark it down. There's about to be some changes hit. Amen. The servant, he goes uh, and he said, you go one more time. He went down there. Please understand something. When he saw it, he comes back and he's not impressed. You see, this is what this is what the religious world is looking for. They're looking for some mighty, mighty end time revival where some big somebody comes and they smite it all over the land and, and, and with their staff and their, and, and their shroud and, and, and oh, we're going to bring the glory and I've got my singers and I've got my musicians and I've got this and I've got that. And, and they don't realize God's got a no-name nobody that's, in, that's going through birthing pains. Uh-uh, unannounced. Nobody's paying any attention to this old man Elijah. He's sitting there and on the seventh time the servant comes back and he says, what do you see? The servant said, I, not a big deal. It's not a big deal. I saw the cloud about the size of a man's hand. Ah! But it wasn't what he saw. It was the fact that there was a word out of season that was bringing the change. He had already heard the sound. Check your Bible. 1 Kings 18. He had already heard the sound of the change. The sound of an abundance and, uh, and you can check that out in the Hebrew, the sound of an abundance. That means a sound of a mighty marching army bringing abundance. Oh, that's what that means in the Hebrew. Oh, hallelujah. I hear God saying, get ready. I'm about to bring a mighty marching army that's going to come and bring a change. And it's not some big revival out there to bless your flesh and boost your ego, but it's going to begin to heal a hurting creation and bring about, a, 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 if I can put it this way, a leadership that's going to bring them into a new dimension. Okay, I got to back up real quick. I got Okay, I'm switching the story here real quick. I want you to hear me. Amen. The Bible said that David, King David, uh, he, he was, and this is in Samuel and Chronicles. The Bible says that, that he, 
he, uh, D- David was in a warfare with the Philistines, just like always, just like always. And, and you know, they, and all of David's reign, he was always fighting somebody. And, and so uh, the Bible says that the Philistines had arrayed themselves against the children of Israel. And David said, well, Lord, what are you going to do? David, and God said, you, you go get them. The Bible said that he jumps up and he takes his army and he smites the Philistines. Oh, hallelujah. And the next day, the next day, the Philistines set up camp again and they're ready to go at it again. And and David says, you know, and, and, and this is where a lot of us are. Well, we fought that battle once. We've had that kind of ministry. We've had that kind of revival. We've had that kind of church. We've had that kind of experience. We know what to do. We know all about it. We're in our comfort zone. We had a word in season. That word in season said, you go fight the fight. Uh, but this time, it's a new day. A new day brings a new sound, a new message, a new anointing, a new everything. We want to have a tendency to lean onto our old because it's comfortable. We're comfortable. We understand that. We know what to do and what not to do. We don't want to look like a fool. And we don't want to look like we're stupid and don't know what we're doing. Uh, especially when we get around all these top-notch big shots. And, they, and they're so cool and calm and collect. And we stumble around like a bunch of crazy people and we don't understand God's not doing that old stuff anymore he's raising up no name nobody's in the house ah hear the word of the Lord the Bible says amen that that David gets ready and I want you to hear this the Bible said he David says let's inquire of the Lord I know it looks like the same battle I know it's the same enemy I know it's the same everything but it's a different day and the different day has a different anointing a different sound Things are not like they were yesterday, or last year, or last month, or last whenever. It's a new sound. Ladies and gentlemen, we have to hear God here and now. I pray this is making some sense to somebody out there. Amen. we got to hear God right now and walk in the virtue of that word. And the Bible said, David, I inquired of the Lord. Shall I go up? Do you want me to do like I've always done? And the Lord said, no, don't you do it. But you wait. And I want you to hear this. And King James it says, you wait until you hear the top or the stirring in the tops of the mulberry trees. And I want you to hear this right here. Because that's type and a shadow of something. And I know, I know that in, 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 in King David's day, there was a wind that would blow and begin to twirl the tops of the mulberry trees. And, and that was a sign of some things. But it, it, bring, it, it, it means something more to us in 2023 than it did back in those days. God is speaking a fresh new anointed word about that. To the tops of the mulberry trees, God says this. He said that you'll hear a new sound, a new word that's coming out of a mature ministry, a pure, pure prophetic mature anointing you're going to hear a new sound you've never heard before don't you move don't you go back to the old don't you try to go back to yesterday don't you pick up the old ways the old tapes the old cds don't you pick up that i got something brand spanking new that i'm about to loose and it'll give you the victory for god spoke read your bible god told david said when you hear the sound when you hear the sound in the tops when this thing begins to change because of the sound I will fight the battle for you. God says, get ready, because I'm about to do something fresh and new in this day like you've never heard before. There's a new sound, a new anointing, a new word. Oh, hallelujah. I'm not talking about something that will bless your flesh. I'm not talking about something that will puff up your ego. I'm talking about something that says, stand still. Oh, there's a new word that's coming out of a mature, anointed ministry. And when I say ministry, I'm not just talking preachers, they even though they'll be involved. I'm talking about we've got men and women that will never stand behind a pulpit uh, that are ministries that are leadership and God says I'm putting a fresh word how do you know this word how will you recognize this word it's not something you're going to analyze up here and say that sounds I like that or I don't like that or I heard that 40 years ago da 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 no this is something that resonates in here you can't turn it off you can't make it null and void you can't say I don't like it uh, because it'll be there your mind might I say, I don't really appreciate that. It makes me uncomfortable. But your spirit says, yea and amen. For a hurting creation demands that we take our place and hear the word of the Lord in a new and anointed way in this day that we're in. Wow. I pray that this is making some sense to somebody. Oh, hallelujah. Uh, you know, my mind begins to go. You know, Jesus chose 12. 
He chose 12. Now, real quick, I, I just this stuff just coming to me. I don't even know what to do with it. I'm going to throw it out there, and you do what you want to with it. Jesus chose 12. He chose 12. Uh, one of them was Judas, and we know that, that uh, what happened there. Uh, and, and they all had great ministries. And, and one of these days, I'll get into it with you, the history of where they went, how they died, how they ministered, and all that stuff. And they all had wonderful, wonderful things that went on. And you can read about Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and Paul, and I don't know, the rest of them all through there, you know, Jude and all those guys. I mean, we'll get into it someday. That's not what I'm trying to say right now. What I'm trying to say is this. Paul was not one of the chosen ones of the twelve. He sat at the feet of Gamaliel and he went a different way. But he said, I'm one born out of due season. Wow. Mm. I'm one that's born out of due season. Oh, hallelujah. And, and, and watch this. And he said, I knew a man above 14 years ago, whether in the body or out, I don't know. But I knew a man above 14 years ago that was caught up to the third heaven and he and they heard, heard a new sound. I heard something. I heard a new sound. Oh, I heard a new sound. And if I tell you that sound, it's unlawful, meaning you'll kill me. You'll stone me because the law said if you blaspheme, they stoned you. And he was telling them, he said, I, I, can't, I can't even share it with you because you can't handle it. And, you know, just like Jesus told his disciples, he said, there's a lot of things I'd like to tell you, but I can't tell you because you can't handle it. And this is where we are right now, ladies and gentlemen. There's some things going on in the kingdom of God as he prepares men and women for this day and hour. It's not coming through dead churches, dead denominations. And yet, and yet, God has people in all of these denominations. Wow. You know, just because you don't go to one of them things or you're not part of one of them things don't mean that you got something on them. Because you see, it don't work that way. We didn't choose none of this stuff. He chose us. We didn't choose him. We're not smart enough. He chose us. Now, having said that, God's got men and women everywhere, all over the world, every denomination. And some of them, right now, right now, under the sound of my voice, there may be some that don't even know or care about anything godly. But I'm here to tell you, God, God has got them in His time and in His order, in their season. He's where they're, they're where they need to be. Everybody listening to me, we're where we need to be in God. There's not one of me, one of you listening to me right now that's out of season or out of order, or out of time. You're right where God wants you to be. Oh, oh, if I could have just served the Lord 20 years ago. No, now's your time. Now's your time. Oh, if I could have just been and, and and there's people that they'll see someone that, that, that maybe come through a Pentecostal experience and maybe they were raised Episcopalian or raised something else and they're going, boy, I, I wish I'd gotten in this center. No, we're all in the order of God where we need to be. The Bible declares this thing. Now, having said all of that, having said all of that, understand something. God says, I've got some men and women right now, right now, that are beginning to raise up and they're going to begin to declare this word for the next season. I guess that might be the best way to declare what I'm trying to say. For the next season. They're going to begin to prophetically declare some things. And where we're sitting right now, we're going to hear it and go, mm, I don't know about that. Just like the disciples. Jesus said, I'm going to, I'm going to go. They're going to kill me. And, you know, ah, no, Lord, no, no, no. No, just like the two men on the road to Emmaus on, on resurrection morning, the Bible said they were walking on the roads of Emmaus, and the Bible said Jesus came and joined themselves to them and said, and I'm paraphrasing, he said, hey, fellas, what's going on? What's happening? And they said, oh, you're a stranger here? You don't know? We had this man, his name is Jesus, and, and, and we knew he was the Messiah. We had seen him do all these great miracles and these wonderful things. We just knew he was the Messiah. And you know what? They killed him. And, and you know, he's been dead three days now. He, he's dead three days. And, you know, now we've got to start all over and find a new Messiah because they got this one. And the Bible said Jesus began to open the scriptures to them and talk with them. And they went on, and, and you know that scripture there, and they, he, they come to the, the place they're going to spend the night, and they, they tried to get him to stay with them, and he, he, <coughs> he blessed the food and gave it to them. And then the Bible said he disappeared out of their sight. They said, did not our hearts burn within us? Oh, hallelujah. You, you see, you see, there were those that could not receive the word of the new season. There are those, and I could go all through the Bible tonight. I, I could get into this for an hour or two. All through the scriptures, all through the scriptures, men and women 
that, that God had chosen and they walked for a time and a season and something and then it came time for a new season, a new sound and they could not or would not walk in it. They could not walk in it. You know, and, and one of the uh, greatest scriptures around that everybody loves to quote is about old Queen uh, Esther, uh, you know, in the book of Esther. Uh, you know, how she she was in God's time and in God's order and he, he did all that he did and and she goes to Mordecai and she says, you know, I don't know about this, you know, and she's kind of, he said, look, God will bring deliverance. He's going to. Count on it. That's, that's the word that's <laughs> in the next season. He's going to bring his life. But who knows whether or not you've come to the kingdom for such a time as this. Who knows this is your time to shine. You're here. You're here right now. And it's your time. Some of you listen to me. Who knows whether you come to the kingdom for such a time as this. God's about to put a word in some of you listening to me. He's about to put a word in you for the next season. There's some songs for the next season. You, 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 you got to understand something. When they were in Egypt, they were God's people. They were, they were God's people. But they could not sing the songs about being delivered from Egypt because they were still in their season of Egypt. Then they get in the wilderness and they're singing their songs of deliverance. You know, as a matter of fact, the Bible says that as soon as they come across the Red Sea and the Red Sea closed upon Pharaoh and his army, that Miriam, Moses' sister, she grabs a tambourine and she begins to dance and sing, uh, uh, How glorious is our Lord, for the horse and rider has been cast into the sea, and on and on and on. Uh, what, what a powerful, powerful song that was. They could sing the songs of deliverance because they were no longer in Egypt, but they could not sing the songs of the new place. They could, why? Because they were still in the wilderness. They, they, they were in a wilderness season. They could not sing the promised land uh, season because they were not there. It took a Joshua and a Caleb to declare to them something. And you know what? Again, there were those as they were standing there holding the giant pieces of fruit from the promised land. There were those that said, the other ten spies said, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, we're holding these giant grapes and stuff. Yeah, I, I, I give you that. But you, you, you guys don't realize, uh, we can't do this because uh, we're just grasshoppers in there. These guys are really big and we ain't got a prayer. Uh, but, but you see, Joshua and Caleb had a word for the next season. They had a word for the next season. Moses didn't even have a word for the next season. He only had a word for the wilderness season. God's raising up men and women right now. I pray this is helping somebody, making some sense. God's getting ready to declare some things where you are in your season, not where you are to stay where you are. See, see, you went through the first grade, second grade, third grade, whatever. You went through whatever grade you did, not so you could stay in that grade. You went through it for a processing and a learning so you could go to the next season or the next grade. So it is in the plan of God. We are where we've been. We've been in our time of season. We've been in our time of learning, our time of hardship, our time of trying and testing. We've been in these things. But God said it's not forever. I'm raising up men and women that are going to give you the next season. They're going to give you a word for the next season. Oh, hallelujah. We're going to show you the grapes of the next season so that you can walk into the fullness of this thing. Oh, hallelujah. Well, I pray that tonight has been a blessing. I'm going to Leave that right there for you. I trust that you've been encouraged that this thing is about to change. Mark my word, it is about to change in the heavens as God begins to say, gird up your loins, it's time to run. It's time to run. Oh, hallelujah. My, my, my. Some of us have been getting, you know, and i got to be honest with you, the older you get, the more you want to be comfortable. You want to kind of relax a little bit. But God said it's time to run. Gird up your loins. This thing's not over yet. We're just getting started. Amen. i, I got to quit. All right, watch this. Don't forget, don't forget October 12, 13, 14, 15, Natchez Trace State Park. Go to the House of the Lord uh, Facebook page or Bob Taranjo or Zach Reagan and get their uh, information for the Natchez Trace State Park, the 46th Annual House of the Lord Conference, October 12, 13, 14, 15. It starts on a Thursday night. It's going to be a great time in God. You're going to enjoy it. I promise you, you will enjoy it. Make plans to be there. Also, 1030 every Sunday morning, Central Time. The House of the Lord on the Facebook live. It's going to be a wonderful, wonderful time in God. Uh, so make plans to join them. Also, uh, the church, Mooresboro, uh, North Carolina, Darren and Dana Best are the pastors there every Sunday evening at 5 o'clock Eastern time. They have a, 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 a service live 
And uh, then I think every, the last Saturday of the month, if I'm not mistaken, you can go on their Facebook page and read all this stuff. But the last Saturday of the, of the month, they have a Saturday evening service at 5 o'clock Eastern time, and they serve a meal. But you make plans to join them, be with them. Also, let me encourage you, uh, uh, a friend of mine up in Newcastle, Pennsylvania, uh, Dr. Mark and, and Jill Kaufman, they have Jubilee International Ministries. They have, and you have to go on a Sunday morning, uh, check those out. I'm not sure the times there, but I've been blessed to go and, and on their uh, uh, live uh, Facebook page, and they have a wonderful worship and great word. Uh, go there, and they're, they're, these I'm just promoting some of these because you can be strengthened, you can be lifted up and encouraged in all these various ministries. So remember those things there. Do what? My, my wife's hollering. Okay. Oh, Bobby Jean. Bobby Jean Taranjo, Thursday night, Facebook, uh, 6 o'clock Central Time. Amen. Tune in for Bobby Jean Taranjo uh, and her teaching. You will be blessed. These are just some things I'm giving you so you'll be encouraged, you'll be strengthened. Amen. You're not in this thing by yourself. You don't have to do without. You're right here in the middle of all that God's doing. Also, we want to thank you for joining us every Tuesday night. And thank you for those of you that write to us, whether it, it might be something, a comment on Facebook or uh, or an email or a text or a phone call or uh, uh, you might sit down and write us a letter. Uh, there are those that share with us an offering or PayPal or whatever. And we so, so appreciate every last one of you. We use these the finances here to bless the ministry. We believe in passing it forward and blessing the people of God. Amen. Uh, so we appreciate all of you. Thank you for joining us. You can write to us at Gary and Paula Gatlin, 901 Eastwood Street. And that is in Paris, Tennessee, 38242. We love you. And again, thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate every one of you. God bless you. We will see you next Tuesday. Bye-bye.